This is uh, part of the one of the core practicals that you need to know about and be able to talk about. Many of you may remember it. It's hard to forget something where you get to set fire to food. Um, and so I just want to talk about um, if you're asked to describe this experiment, the things you need to keep in mind, all right, and the controls that you need to make sure you're doing. So the first thing is when you are setting this up is that you need to weigh your food. Always remember to weigh the piece of food that you are um, doing, all right? And then before you begin to burn anything, you need to take the temperature of your water and you need to take the temperature of a known volume. It's important you know how much you have. So if you put 20 milliliters in, you need to know that it's 20 milliliters. So you take the temperature of a known water volume, okay? Then you get to set fire to the food and you place the food underneath the boiling tube as close as you can. Notice here that we, the tongs, that would be a safety feature that you need to make sure you're holding the, the boiling tube or the test tube with tongs so that it's not too, doesn't burn you. Um, and so you take the temperature of the known volume of water, then you place the food, put the place, uh, light the food on fire, you place it underneath, okay? Um, underneath the boiling tube as quickly as possible. and you let it burn completely, all right? And then after you let it burn completely, you need to take the temperature of the water again. If your water boils, by the way, then you've, it's, it's no good. The experiment is totally invalid because you're just losing heat, then uh, the water's starting to evaporate. And so you don't actually, the temperature will never get higher than 100 degrees, right? Because then at that point it starts evaporating. So, um, but you take the temperature of the water again, okay? Um, and then the idea is that you can calculate how much energy was in the food by looking at the increase in temperature that's happened in the water. And the formula for this, it's not clear to me whether you need it, so I always like to make sure that students have it just in case, all right? And so if you want the energy of the food in joules per gram, okay, then what you're gonna do is you take the temperature difference, so the change in temperature Right, the change in temperature, which is, that's what the triangle stands for, the change. So you would take the final temperature minus the temperature that you took at the beginning. So this temperature minus step number two temperature. Uh, and you would multiply it by, for example, if you had 20 milliliters in here, then you would multiply it by 20. So this is the volume of the water, all right? And then you multiply that by 4.2. 4.2 is the amount of energy it takes to increase a one milliliter of water or one cubic centimeter of water, same thing, uh, by one degree Celsius. So basically what you're doing is you're saying, I have 20 milliliters of water, okay? And I'm multiplying that by 4.2 because that's the amount of energy required um, for each milliliter of this 20. And then you're gonna multiply that by the actual change in temperature that you saw. So this way you're gonna get joules, all right? And then you divide that whole thing by the mass of the food that you burned, right, in grams. So then you get joules, so the, the value up here is joules for energy divided by grams, the mass of food, per so joules per gram. So this is the equation that you need for this energy um, content, all right? And in and of itself, right, you need to make sure that you're controlling the volume of water, you need to make sure that you're taking, you're taking safety precautions, so using tongs, using eye protection, pulling back hair when you have op open flame, think about anything that could you know, catch on fire, that would be bad. Um, and then make sure that you're very clearly outlining the steps. You weigh the food, you take the temperature of the water before and after, you make sure that the as soon as the food starts to burn, you put it underneath the tube. Now. Um, this, whatever value you get is always going to be an actual underestimate, an underestimate of the real energy that is contained within the food. And the reason for that is that this is quite an inaccurate method. As you can imagine, you're losing a lot of energy of this heat energy um, to the surroundings or to the tube itself as it gets hot and not transferring all of it into the water. So there is a, um, a tool called a calorimeter which is set up, if you're ever asked about a calorimeter, um, it's set up to um, capture, to be more accurate and capture more of the heat 
um, of the burning food. So often calorimeters have a place where oxygen can go in so that the food burns completely. It will be surrounded by water. It will have insulation on the outside so that um, the heat stays in and is transferred to the water. It may have a um, a longer tube for the heat to escape so that more heat gets put into the water. There's all sorts of things. So a calorimeter would be an improvement on this method that you did.